Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 28th lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity and we are discussing we are actually we have reached the last module and in the last lecture we have discussed how a new totality may be forced by taking the concerns of both the proponents as well as the opponents of critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. And then we have discussed empirical responses to postmodernists okay. and then we have discussed we have tried to evaluate this new totality against the backdrop of four critical uh, pillars of modernity namely holism or totality reflexivity, rationality and social movements. For reflexivity and rationality, please refer back to the discussion on Giddens and Habermas. Okay. And today, we will discuss radicalized modernity. In the last lecture, we have discussed uh, the responses to challenge to modernism on, em on empirical grounds, I mean empirical responses to postmodernists. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss the responses to challenge on theoretical grounds, empirical responses we have discussed, but theoretical responses. Giddens effectively, Giddens reflections on modernity is effectively neo Weberian, whereas Habermas's reflections on modernity is neo Marxist, I mean second generation Frankfurt school. Similar interests in some ways. I mean post responses to post structuralists and post modernists are informed by an earlier interest in uh, for example, philosophy of language, hermeneutics uh, and so on which also underlies some, some elements of post structuralism and post modernism. The way there has been an attempt in the direction of the defense of modernity both as historical analysis of a totality and as modernist intellectual perspectives, it is very important to look uh, back on, on the on, on so far as radicalized modernity is concerned, we must look at the works of Giddens and Habermas on this count because it is a more neo Weberian account uh, Giddens I mean and then when we look at Habermas it is a neo Marxist perspective. Let us first start with Giddens, Anthony Giddens. For Giddens, the institutional analysis of modernity is a Weberian st style uh, multidimensional or pluralist account. It becomes, I mean, this such institutional analysis of modernity becomes of interest in terms of its link to structuration theory. Okay, we have already discussed structuration theory, how uh, practice is both the medium and uh, outcome of an event, and and I mean in the in uh, Giddens is discussed Giddens discussed these things in his uh, book, The Consequences of Modernity. I mean there has been a systematic attempt by Giddens at embodying notion of reflexivity within macro social theory. There is a move from epistemology to methodology to ontology. Okay. This such analysis of, of such transition from epistemology to methodology to ontology could be presented like I mean uh, in terms of three important pillars of modernity namely reflexivity, holism or totality and social movements. What is that reflexivity that we talk about? That duality of structure I mean structuration theory deals with this. I mean there is technical solution to agency. I mean there is technical solution to a, the dichotomy between agency and structure and Giddens argues that rules are simultaneously a product of action and a precondition for action. 
it implies that regularities in social organization are not given, but result from a skilled performance which can equally involve the transformation of roles. And thirdly, this is related to a rejection of philosophical anthropology in favor of general statements about human beings capacity to produce their own society, the institutions and structures generated by actors are not necessarily organized in particular ways in contradistinction with what Marx said. And such account of modernity has shifted from the more empiricist and inevitableist um, mode in class structure of the advanced societies which resembles some of the works already discussed earlier uh, to a looser and more uh, contingent account of modernity which need not reach immediate claims about nature of the social world in general. So far as reflexivity is concerned, but so far as holism or totality is concerned, let us see how modernity for how, how is modernity characterized for Giddens by Giddens. Okay? I mean there is a dialectic of globalization and dispersal which is similar to Lass and Uri's disorganization of experience and organization of the or disorganization of national economy and reorganization of the world economy. Secondly, the reflexive nature we must understand the reflexive nature of social thought in modernity. Okay? I mean social thought becomes constituent element of social reality because theories cannot be produced in vacuum. Theories have been generated through social reality. right? Okay? Such reflexive nature of social thought in modernity is particularly important given the central role of skill and knowledge in production of society. And thirdly, consequently reflexive reordering of social relations of production. And most importantly for our purposes, the disembedding mechanisms we have already discussed in the, in the case of Giddens. Disembedding mechanisms, I mean tokens such as money, expert knowledge such as uh, natural science and so on, such disembedding mechanisms enable interrelation across distances of time and space. They rest upon a sad trust in their validity, they form abstract steering systems, they are increasingly out of control. Hence, radicalized modernity, the, uh, I mean hence the, there is an urgent need to, to radicalize modernity. I mean the society's capacity for action on itself has grown dramatically, but the ability to control this is less and less. Coming to social movements, in this context social movements appear as a reaction to the processes of modernity. Okay. What we see? that uh, in capitalism we, we look at uh, workers movements, in so far as industrialization is concerned we look at response to um, industrialization, we look at ecology movements, environmental groups movements. So far as surveillance is concerned, what is the reaction to surveillance? Reaction to surveillance, response to surveillance is in the form of free speech and democratic movements. What is the response to military power? The response to military power is in the form of peace movements. Not much has been theorized upon women's movements. Okay? Okay? It does not imply that it has not been theorized upon at all, but inadequately. Okay? Social movements aim either at freedom or at self-realization and in this way uh, social movements play a valuable role. Okay. In, in, it is in the how to radicalize modernity in the works of a new Weberian namely Giddens. Now, let us look at a new Marxist's reflection on modernity in the, through the works of Eugen Habermas. Habermas starts from very different assumptions about the nature of society but ends up at quite similar description of modernity. As with Giddens, there is a shift from epistemology and methodology to ontological presuppositions, I mean in his theory of communica uh, communicative action. But so far as Habermas is concerned, you see we have discussed reflexivity, totality and social movements in the case of Giddens. And in the case of Habermas, we are going to first start with rationality.
rationality is very important. Okay. Then also we will we'll, we'll go ahead with this, we will see. Okay. So, far, so far as rationality is concerned for, for Habermas, human beings are neither isolated subjects nor simply processors of nature. They are communicatively socialized. Intersubjective concept versus both affirmative philosophy of the subject and post-structuralist death of the subject. I mean, there is a key question that which has become very important. I mean, uh, it is the constitution of intersubjective reality via understanding between subjects. Secondly, the concept of rationality for Habermas is then found to lie in this process of mutual understanding. What is that mutual understanding? I mean, all acts, verbal or physical, implicitly raise claims as to their validity. Any statement, for example, raises the claim that it is comprehensible, that is, that it is true, that it is sincere and that it is normatively right. If queried, all of these claims except the first can be defended on rational terms. In other words, rationality is a potential inherent, uh, rationality is potentially inherent in all intersubjective social reality and communicative activity has the character of a dialogue oriented towards mutual understanding. And this consensus is then a goal for all speakers, all authors. Thirdly, elements of such rationality then differentiate themselves out from this intersubjective reality. In particular, the economy and the state come to act as rationalized subsystems of society. Each of these has a particular referent, the natural world on the one hand, the human world on the other. Okay? We have discussed earlier the relationship between nature and human beings. Okay? The, the earlier notion was that no nature controls everything. Metaphysical proponents of metaphysics says, I mean metaphysical perspective says that no nature controls human beings. Okay? Then positivistic stage, scientific stage suggests that no, it is human beings which who have the potential to control nature. Okay? That is why we have seen a transition from faculty of contemplation to faculty of control. Perceived thinkers, most of the perceived thinkers, for example, Marx first pointed out that no, there is a dialectical relationship between nature and human beings. Okay? Human beings are not only controlled by nature, but also know how to control nature. By acting upon nature, human beings not only change nature, but also change themselves. I mean, but also change the social relations involved in it. This is very important that I said particularly the economy and the state come to act as rationalized subsystems of society. Each of these has a particular reference, the natural world on the one hand and the human world on the other. And each, whether it is human world or natural world, okay, they operate in terms of goal rationality in relation to this referent. Lastly, each is enabled to do this by means of a non-linguistic token, money or power. Okay? Our communicative action has been reduced to money and power relations. Okay? And these, these system, fourthly, these systems are then counter opposed to the life world out of which they developed in Habermas's terminology, Habermas used the term Lebenswelt. Lebenswelt. Uh, to, to refer to life world. Okay? I mean, these systems are then counterposed to the life world out of which they developed. A life world which is characterized by the non-instrumental rationality of, of communicative action. And increasingly, they come to colonize it as economic and administrative imperatives react back on everyday life. So far as social movements are concerned, social movements can then be seen as a reaction against this colonization by the instrumental reason of subsystems, which follow their own independent logic and in defense of an ideal communicative reason. Please note that so far as totality or holism is concerned, similarity of this to Giddens' pluralist account of institutions of modernity and of disembedding mechanisms there are differences that are there so far as the concept of life world, life world, I mean Lebenswelt, not accepted by Giddens, 
who then has to present movements as effectively ungrounded reactions to modernity. Major achievement of Habermas's concept of totality or holism is its ability to combine a structural analysis of the logic of systems of the economy and the state with a micro social analysis of the life world. And this is related to the argument of Raymond Williams and E. P. Thompson that we have studied in cultural studies response to uh, uh, the critical modernist paradigms in sociology that I mean our everyday culture of working class and so on. It can also be argued that Habermas's argument centered on uh, decentered subjectivity or, or communicative action avoids the false alternative between individual intentional subjectivity and impersonal systems and it is then similar in effect although not in content to Giddens double structure I mean duality of the structure. Okay? Coming to rationality again coming back to rationality again okay? in relation to post-structuralism or post-structuralist or post-modernist critique and so on the key argument here is over the meaning of rationality. For post-structuralists as for earlier critical theorists, there is only one rationality to be accepted or rejected and block. Habermas, however, argues that the enlightenment discourse on modernity has always carried a counter discourse with it, which he is now making it more, uh, which he is now making more explicit. Uh, Habermas argues, for example, that the young Hegelians who include Marx and far back um, saw a reason not as an absolute, but as situated reason in relation to history uh, is situated reason uh, in relation to history, in relation to external nature, in relation to decentered subjectivity of internal nature and in relation to society as the alienated powers of human beings. And other differences include the, I mean, if you look at such things that discourse of modernity, then counter discourse on modernity, subject centered region, intersubject subject object rationality, communicative rationality. When I say subject object rationality, I mean goal rationality, instrumental rationality. Okay? And when I say communicative rationality, I mean substantive rationality. If I say these differences also can include uh, necessarily good autonomy of economy and state subsystems, but uh, as a counter discourse, we can also say that no, these are imbalanced, uh, unbalanced growth increasing autonomy of ditto. Okay? In Habermas's own language, the paradigm of the knowledge of subjects has to be replaced by the paradigm of mutual understanding between subjects capable of speech and action. I mean, he discussed this in, in his philosophical discourse of modernity. Giddens argues that Habermas makes use of three types of rationality. Okay? One is local criteria of rationality in communicative action. Okay, which gives rise to the possibility of universally valid judgments as to the rationality or other ways of speech uh, and action. Secondly, the concept of the rationality, I mean comprehensibility of human action. And thirdly, the social expansion of rationality in the modern period. Clearly, however, these are intimately linked. I mean, whether you say talk about local criteria of rationality in communicative action or the concept of rationality, I mean, comprehensibility of human action and the social expansion of rationality in the modern period. Each, the, each of these three, four types of rationality are interlinked. Mm. The first two directly so, the third as a follow on in particular circumstances. Effectively, Habermas argues that this third element the process of rationalization has followed a very selective path in modern times under the impact of the most dominant mode of production today that is capitalism. Please note also that in terms of programmatic aims, while Habermas follows Marx uh, uh, and Lukacs in seeing instrumentally rational subsystems as a reified form of human activity, we have discussed reification in the context of Lukacs. While Habermas follows Marx and Georg Lukacs in examining instrumental rational subsystems as a refined form of human activity, 
Habermas no longer holds out hope for overcoming this reification and their relative autonomy from other human action, but rather hopes for a reconquest of the life world by communicative reason. In sociological language, Habermas does not believe that the, the instrumental rational subsystems can be reduced to the communicative action in the life world either practically or theoretically. Thus, like this is like the shift from the philosophy of the subject to decentered holism or decentered totality. The aim of achieving an ideal speech situation where inequalities of power and resources, for example, are no longer standing in the way of full understanding between equals remains valid nevertheless. Habermas as liberal is concerned for uh, defense of private realm and uncoercive communication. Okay? If we have to take stock of uh, what we have discussed in this section on new totality before we move on to modernity in India. Okay? Modernity, I mean India between worlds, between multiple worlds. Let us first see how this new totality is looking at these concepts, I mean the four key concepts as uh, four key concepts of modernity, four central critical pillars of modernity, okay? namely holism or totality, uh, reflexivity, rationality and social movements, then modernity as a paradigm, then modernity in contradistinction with deconstruction of modernity and what is the, what is the general outlook that we, we are going to, we have, we have developed over these, uh, over these lectures. Okay. These four concepts, four key concepts to start with, uh, holism or totality, I mean at its simplest, the concept of society as a whole can mean societies as units, usually implicitly nation states. I mean, and this was interrogated, this was criticized by Wallerstein and uh, Lass and Uri that uh, in contemporary context, there is only one global society for Wallerstein it is capitalist world economy and this version of totality or holism implies the need to set temporal or conceptual boundaries to the unit, hence in one version the concept of modernity, I mean modern society as a whole. It suggests double periodization, one capitalist patriarchy as distinct from non-capitalist societies and from other patriarchies and secondly class society or gendered society as a meta period in effect all in all historical societies and both versions imply holistic concepts of society as such not just modernity the kind of philosophical anthropology developed by the young Marx by Habermas and by some socialist feminists and so on and at this highest level even non-theories become descriptions of society as a whole, especially the anti-ontological thrust of post-structural religion implies an ultimate source in an apparently infinite flexible, infinitely uh, flexible and purely social nature of humanity. Please note that certain, there are certain difficulties normally raised around the notion of human nature decline. Uh, greatly if we take the primary element of human species being to be our social nature. The, the argument over modernity is then one over the extent which we can describe society as dominated by uh, uh, for example class and gender or by capitalist patriarchy. There is a rejection of determinism and of ontological reality at this point makes the kind of relativist uh, historicism which treats different spatially or temporally uh, separated societies as irreducibly different and unknowable difficult uh, or impossible to sustain. Foucault avoids this problem as at the cost of a radical denial of the performance of his theories and an ad hoc approach to theory construction, necessarily so because any formal coherence between his different approaches would imply uh, statements about the nature of the social world and hence theories of general holism or totality. Okay. This is very important. Coming to reflexivity, it is a deeply con contested area. We will discuss it at uh, uh, 
at different levels i mean when a new totality looks at uh, reflexivity i mean in so far as historicity is concerned i mean at the level of social reality there is increasing scope for society to act on itself mm. i mean investment political transformation modes of culture i mean cultural modes and so on secondly intersubjective networks i mean growth in autonomy and reflexivity in sense of uh, distance and conscious acting on networks and thirdly process of rationalization i mean goal rationality and communicative rationality that we have um, seen in the works of habermas these all relate to modernity reflexivity in general under this this purview is either the need to theorize the effect of re reflexivity on on action so far as gidens is concerned or the need to theorize its effects in research contexts what lentin discussed so far as rationality is concerned instrumental rationality as proposed by weber is counterposed to the communicative rationality of the life world in the case of habermas again weber pointed out value rational social acts and the post structuralist suggested that non rational acts it is always seen as closely linked to modernity okay um, that in affirmative modernism rationality is good rational science politics economics and so on reflexivity simply upsets this okay the this argument works because of the identification between rationality and i mean communicative rationality and instrumental rationality so far as social movements are concerned there are three axes of variance here there is an emphasis on first there is an emphasis on consciousness or culture versus instrumental rationality rational organizations i mean different conceptualizations of nature of movements secondly differences i mean different different conceptual frameworks must be built to make an integration between old social movements and new social movements and thirdly movements from below versus movements from above i mean we have one must there is a need to rethink the role of agency it requires uh, a coherent approach on the lines of alan turing and jürgen habermas i mean there is a move from worker employer conflict including class culture or class consciousness to new social movements versus a state and economy as the central structure of society i mean there is there must be shifts within modernity okay secondly it implies bracketing question of the nature of the transformation in the case of less and worry we have seen how uh, uh, what are the unintended effects of old conflicts uh, which lead to uh, management and welfare state in other words a new intelligentsia which gives rise to movements from both sides both old social movements as well as new social movements and there is a debate on the role of agency i mean that agency debate i mean versus uh, structuralist and and voluntarist positions emphasizing networks and intersubjectivity i mean uh you can look at um, habermas's reflections on intersubjectivity and and ep thompson's reflections on class in critical modernist paradigm in sociology there is a distinction between formal and substantive rationality weber for uh, for example weber uh, on bureaucratization marx on capital or between communicative and value rationality okay that we have seen in the works of communicative rationality in the works of habermas and and value rationality in the in the context of weber reflexivity is useful here because it enables us to stand one step back from formal or goal rationality and ask about the substantive rationality of the goal and the actual effects of the process of trying to achieve that goal critical modern modernist paradigm in sociology as a i mean if i have to say modernity as a paradigm four important pillars that i want to discuss here i mean there is a distinct social totality in particular the formation of capital and the modern state secondly these follow a logic of rationalization which may and may be caused by it differing normative implications but some at some at least of the effects of these are positive and thirdly modern society is not simply increasingly rational but also increasingly reflexive 
Hence, the critique of instrumental rationality inflated into a critique of reason in general and the increasing feedback effect, I mean the loss of the appearance of simplicity. And fourthly, social movements from below and above appear as agents constituted by and constituting these processes. I mean, in the case of Giddens, rationalized in the modern totality. I mean, movements act these these processes. I mean, movements act to rationalize uh, certain social movements. They play a crucial role. They act as they act to rationalize. Uh, for example, production, management, politics, citizenship movements, social provision. I mean, welfare state but are constituted themselves in their goal rational elements by this environment. Because of their role, society is increasingly reflexive, both management and so new social movements uh, up the, the reflexivity stakes. If we have to look at modernity on the one hand and post-structuralism, post-modernism, feminism, cultural studies on the other. Okay? The claim that totality, I mean post-structuralism, post-modernism, they represent certain misunderstandings of modernity. The claim that totality does not exist is negated by the denial of uh, social agency, uh, I mean social movements that we have discussed as ineffective or unreal if structure does not exist and agency is impossible, how come anything happens. Reflexivity is misunderstood as problematic for mod modernism because rationality is only understood as goal rational, instrumental rationality. Okay? In other words, modernity is identified with affirmative modernism or critical modernists are read as if they were affirmative modernists. Against this, it has to be argued that escape from communicative rationality is not possible. The fully irrational can only be pointed to not communicated by definition. What is treated as irrational or locally communicatively rational situations of communicative closure, the far right world pictures are rational within these limited terms and in these contexts in other words they make sense in communication between members of far right groups. Reflexivity is constituent not only of modernity but also of substantive rather than formal rationality. Formal rationality can be identified with, for example, parliamentary politics. The substantive rationality of social movements critics and challenges this by emphasizing not the formality of electoral and parliamentary procedures, but the substance of political participation, I mean democratic movements. And when we look at modernity and feminism, the great unsolved, this is a great unresolved theoretical issue. The starting point, for example, is is that the concept of patriarchy is on the same level not as capitalism but as class society. It implies that we need a theorization of capitalist patriarchy as a specific type of patriarchy as well as a specific type of class society that suggests that its specificity has to do with the formal rationalities of capital and state involved. Please note that there is an ambiguous position of the women's movements, I mean as goal rational economic or political challenge, it is likely to wind up with greater gender and equivalent of the welfare state compromise. Need to expand, there is a need to expand the still unsatisfactory definition of rationality and use feminist research methods to open further issues of reflexivity which are after all potentially infinitely recursive. There are key new issues of second wave feminism uh, that question the self and that question the self or reflexivity and the meaning of uh, rationality. Beyond this, 